you at every campus to lift up a mighty praise to our risen Savior. He is King of Kings, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. If y'all don't quit, I'll just keep rocking. I ain't ashamed of my roots. I, I, I came out of one of those shouting churches. I came out of one of those that had run up and... Y'all, many of you don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm giving away a secret. But I came from churches like where they shouted so bad that sometimes they'd knock holes in the sheetrock. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? I wish we would around here every once in a while. Tell somebody I'm going to praise the Lord. If you're going to sit in that seat, I'm going to praise the Lord. Turn to two or three people and say, it's time to praise the Lord. You can be seated. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to welcome all of you here today, all of you in the overflows, all of you down in Spartanburg and Buford, Midtown's having their first morning service this morning. Isn't that awesome? And coming. It's gone to double services, and Orange County is meeting in the Bryn Center that seats over 6,000, and they're packing that out out in California, and here we are in Gville. And in the Lord blessing us. How many of you'd like to hear just a little bit more of that? I, I know you would, and it's not fair to whoever arranges the services to let them sing and then me have to preach behind that. I don't appreciate that. It's kind of anticlimactic from this point forward. But God is in this house. And it's pretty exciting. And it's alive. <laughs> and I'm believing God today to touch you in a powerful, powerful way. If you have your Bibles, I do want to read the miraculous story of Easter that's found in the New Testament, Luke 24. You can look on the screens. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, certain other women came with them to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. Turn to somebody and say, that's the Spice Girls. <laughs> and they found the stone and rolled, and it was rolled away from the tomb. And they went in, listen, and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, which tells me it wasn't men, it was angels. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, what a great question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was at, still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? And then they remembered his words. It's a powerful, powerful thing to understand what happened at Easter. A great, great preacher who has gone on to be with the Lord left a legacy of two remarkable sermons. One of the sermons that became quite famous from Dr. S.M. Lockridge. He was an African-American pastor and preacher. So leader in the civil rights movement, march with Dr. King. But even more notable than that was his ability to preach Jesus from the pulpit. He had a famous sermon that was called, That's My King. And it became world famous. And whether you realize it or not, you've heard it. You've heard bits and pieces of it. There's not a preacher in the nation that hasn't taken some of it at some point. And if they, if they haven't, they're just young and haven't discovered it yet. But it's a remarkable, remarkable sermon. Then his second sermon that became famous that sometimes... Someone will say something and it becomes something that lives for generations. And that's what's happened with his second sermon. It was called, It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. 
You know, if you get a title like that, you don't have to preach good. If you can just come up with a good title, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's three minutes of a sermon, but it's three minutes of truth that are profound. And I want you to hear them from the lips of this great preacher and let the message settle in and I'll come right back. Check this out. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Feeling forsaken by his father. Left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. That's power. So I want to preach part two of his sermon. And it's simply this. He was right. He was preaching Calvary was Friday, but Sunday's coming. But I want to preach good news today that it's Sunday. It's Easter Sunday and Jesus is coming just like he said he would. He's coming again. There is no Easter Sunday without horrible Fridays. The, the sky grew dark. The earth began to tremble. What a horrible, horrible thing that was heard as Jesus uttered from the cross. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? The veil was torn in the temple. 
Jesus hanging on the cross. Heaven is weeping. Hell is rejoicing. The perfect man, Jesus Christ, is dying a hideous death on the cross. Satan thought he had destroyed Jesus on Friday. Satan thought that the battle was won for hell on Friday. But three days later, a mighty angel was dispatched from heaven. He rolled the stone away and Jesus Christ stepped out of that tomb. When he died on the cross, he was a silent lamb. But when he rose from the dead and stepped out of that tomb, he was no longer a silent lamb. He was the lion of the tribe of Judah and he was roaring with resurrection power. And today the message is he is not here in that tomb. He is risen. It's Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. And our Savior has humiliated hell. Our Savior has outwitted Satan. He has overpowered the grave. He has caused sin to bow its knee. He has defeated the strategies of hell against you and against your family. He has taken your sin and your shame and he has pronounced that you are forgiven and you are a child of the Most High God. It's Sunday and Jesus is coming again. Do you believe that? Say amen, somebody. If you want to really understand this day, what atheists don't understand, what Christian critics don't understand, is you can't just go to the story of Christmas and stop of a baby being born. You can't just go to the cross and realize that he died for our sins and stop. You don't understand Christianity if you do that. You can't even come to Easter and say, because there's an empty tomb, then the program of God is complete because that is not the end. You have to go to the back of the book. And when I go to the back of the book, it tells me that it's Easter Sunday, but it's not over. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered sin, but one day he's coming back again. The trumpet is going to sound and ain't no grave gonna hold our bodies down. The trumpet is gonna sound. There is going to come a change in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. It's Sunday, but Jesus is coming. I love that line that S.M. Lockridge said. He said, the world is winning, people are sinning, and evil is grinning. But I want to say, it's Sunday. They may be grinning and winning and sinning, but Jesus is coming and we better be ready. We better get our hearts ready. We better get our families ready because he's coming soon. He's coming soon. You can't take half the gospel and it doesn't end at the tomb. He's coming soon. I've read the back of the book and it's Sunday, but Jesus is coming. I want you to know that we don't celebrate a resurrection only that happened 2,000 years ago. But we celebrate another resurrection that is coming for those who have died in the Lord. Your mothers, your fathers, your children, your sons, your husbands, your wives, people that you love, people that you miss, people that you think about, people that your heart was worn while she was singing a few moments ago. Ain't no grave gonna hold. And you couldn't help but see before me, my father's face flashed. This gone on to be with the Lord. My brother's face came before me and other ones, my grandfather, people that I've loved and people in this church that, that I preached their funeral. But one of these days, the trumpet is going to sound and we're going to a land where there is no more death, no more crying, no more sighing, no more pain for the former things will be passed away. And I want to remind Satan that one angel is going to chain him and throw him in a bottomless pit and ultimately he's going to burn in the lake of fire that I'll never go to because Jesus is alive. It's Sunday, but Jesus is coming. Give him a praise if you believe it. At every campus, give him a mighty praise right now. Hallelujah. 
Calvary was a tremendous temporary victory for Satan and all of hell. It's a true story about the war between England and France. Napoleon had invaded England. And everyone knew in that nation of England that if they didn't make a stand and stop Napoleon at a place called Waterloo, the whole nation would fall. They would all go into captivity. And so the Battle of Waterloo became critical. The British captain was named Wellington. He was over all the armed forces that would fight Napoleon and his powerful army. They had never been defeated. And back then, they had signal men that would stand on mountains and they would send signals from mountaintop to mountaintop, from signal man one to another until they reached the city of London. And there in London, thousands upon thousands of people, back in those days, the only form of communication they, they erected a big billboard as massive as they could see so that everybody in the streets of London could look up and see how the battle had ended at Waterloo. They knew if Wellington had been defeated at Waterloo, then the battle was over and they were going to become slaves to, to Napoleon and his armies. So they waited, watching and the signal started coming from the battlefield how the battle had gone. And just as it would happen, this is a true story, the fog started setting in as if you've ever been there to London, it can come suddenly out of nowhere. And as the man was writing on the billboard with red paint, he wrote these words. And then the fog came and it covered. But all they could see was two words that he wrote. Wellington defeated. Wellington defeated. The people of London, their hearts sank in fear. Many began to tremble and cry, and some ran to their homes and locked the doors, and others stood in the streets dumbfounded, heartbroken, realizing that their nation would never be the same. Wellington defeated was the message. But as some were still standing in the streets, the fog began to lift sometime later. And someone happened to look up and they realized that the message had been obscured in its entirety. One word was missing. It said Wellington defeated and the word missing was Napoleon. Nobody knew. It didn't look like it. And now suddenly the weeping turned into rejoicing. Suddenly the people realized that, that Napoleon didn't defeat our general, but our general defeated Napoleon. And they were rejoicing and they were dancing in the streets. 2,000 years ago on the cross, when they put Jesus, crowned that crown of thorns on his head, and stabbed him in his side, and pierced his heart up through his abdomen, ripped his back to pieces. And it looked like that it was over in hell, put up a big billboard. Jesus Christ defeated and all of hell was laughing and all of heaven was weeping. But three days later at the dawning of a new day, suddenly the fog lifted and the message was not when Jesus came out of that tomb, Jesus Christ defeated. It was Jesus Christ defeated Satan. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave and he defeated your sin and shame. Somebody give the Lord a praise. I'm glad that Calvary was the devil's Waterloo. <laughs> I heard a story the other day or read it actually about a, a man who was in a hurry walking home and he decided that he needed to take a shortcut and it was very dark this night and he had to go through a cemetery and he had to walk through it with no lights and he was walking and I guess he was a little freaked out and he was looking around hearing strange sounds and he walked and fell right into a grave that had been fresh, freshly dug. They were probably going to put a coffin in there the next morning and when he hit the bottom 
of that grave, he jumped and he clawed and he did everything he could to try to get out, but it was too deep and he could not get out. After trying for about 30 minutes and sweating, and he finally just sat in the dark corner of that grave that's so dark that you couldn't even hardly see your hand in front of you. He sat in the shadow of that corner of that grave and just said to himself, I'll wait for the sun to come up and somebody will come find me tomorrow. While he was sitting in that shadow, Along comes another man, and he falls into the same grave on the other end, and he naturally and quickly starts grabbing and clawing and scratching, trying to get his, trying to lift himself out of that grave, and he can't get out. He tries and tries and tries, and finally, after about 10 minutes, he just sits down in the side of the grave, and he thinks to himself, well, I can't get out, and suddenly, while he's sitting there, he hears from the other end of that dark grave a voice, and the voice said, you can't get out of here, but he did. When they put Jesus in that tomb, all the demons in hell and death itself said, you can't get out of here, but I promise you he did. He did it for me. He did it for you. He paid the price. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Tell somebody beside you, he did it. It's Sunday. But Jesus is coming. I told them at the Good Friday service, the word Easter, I felt needed to carry more significance. And so I just did a simple little outline that I want to close with this morning. I want you, if you've got a pen or a piece of paper, to write this down. If you've got a phone, I want you to make a note and I want you to remember what I'm about to share with you over the next six minutes. But there are, there are the letters of the word Easter. Write them down. E-A-S-T-E-R. Write it like that. And the E stands for Emmanuel. The message of Easter is God is with us. The message of Easter is Jesus came and he was God in skin. If you want to know what God is like, don't go to the Old Testament and read how the, the kind of a, it, it almost looks like God was dealing with sin in the Old Testament. There, there, it, it was brutal, eye for eye. It, you had to pay, the price of sin had to be paid. But if you really want to know what God is like, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You want to know how God looks at you? Then look at Jesus. How did he treat people? He was never mad at anybody. He was never angry at anybody except Pharisees and hypocrites. But to people who were hurting, to people who were caught in sin, to people who had failed miserably, to people who had messed up, he would throw his arms around them. The woman caught in the act of a Adultery. The woman living with, married five times and living with number six, he didn't condemn her. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He said, I give you living water. That's who Jesus is. If you want to know how God loves, look at Jesus. If you want to know how God thinks, look at Jesus. You would not be afraid of Jesus. You, some of you are afraid of God. You don't understand who he is. You think he's like Zeus, the Greek God. The pictures of Zeus, he has one finger pointing and he has with the other arm a lightning bolt. And he's just waiting on you to mess up. And that's some of, many of you have an image of God like that. And he's waiting on you to mess up. And when he does, he's going to get you real good. That is not the God of the New Testament. The God of the New Testament, whose name is Jesus says, I love you. I took your sins away. I paid the price. All I want to do when I catch you is love you and bless you and raise you and forgive you and restore you and be with you wherever you go. Emmanuel, God is with us. And then there is the A, which stands for atonement. The word atonement means at one -ment that we were separated from God. But on that day of atonement, Jesus on the cross 
made us one at one with God. He said, no longer will I be separated from you from your, because of your sin, but my blood cleanses you. My blood pronounces you guiltless. My blood says that your past is forgiven and Easter stands for Emmanuel. God is with me. Easter stands for I have atonement. My sins cannot, I don't have to listen to the haunting of the ghost of guilt. There is no condemnation because of the atonement blood of Jesus Christ. And then thirdly, there's the Emmanuel and there's, there's the atonement. But then there is the, thank you, sunrise, <laughs> sunrise, sunrise. You somebody said, you spelled it wrong. No, I didn't. We had a sunrise service this morning out there and had one at Lake Lanier and hundreds of people were gathering. It was beautiful. But I'm not talking about that kind of sunrise, S-U-N. I'm talking about S-O-N. The message of Easter is that God doesn't just forgive you, but God has called you his son, his daughter. And it's a call for the sons of God, the daughters of God, to as many as believed on him, to them gave he the power to become not the slaves of God, not even the servants of God. He doesn't see you as that. He sees you as a son, as a daughter. And he says, I want you to rise to sonship. I want you to rise to a place of reigning in life. I want you to be blessed. I want you to succeed. I want you to have destiny and dreams and purpose connected to your life. And I want you to rise to that sonship, rise to that place where I have called you to be. You are a daughter of the most high God. You are a son of the most high God. And the S stands for sonship. And then I want you to see that the T stands for truth. There's a powerful verse in numbers. They can throw it up and it says, is God a man that he can lie? Numbers 14 and or 23 says, God is not a man that he can lie, nor the son of man. Listen to this, that he should repent. Listen now, has God ever made you a promise? Listen to what he says. He says, has he said it and he will not do it? I know the Lord told me that he had somebody for me, but I've been waiting a long time and I hadn't met him yet. Has the Lord said it and will he not do it? Has the Lord spoken it and he will not make it good? Did he not say, I know the plans I have for you, plans of good and not evil to give you hope and give you a future? And will he say it and not make it good? The answer is no. He cannot lie. He is truth. And your God has told you the truth. He's got a plan for your life. And the message of Easter is he's given you truth. Then lastly, I want you to see this. The E stands for eternal life. Oh, I'm so thankful that if I die in the Lord today, I'm ready to go. I'm in a suit and everything. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Just put me in there. I look good today. Got a tie on. I don't always look like this. But you know what? The shell, the old body will be empty. But my spirit to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You understand if you've lost a loved one, they are presently with the Lord. We have eternal life. We don't fear death. I love what, uh, what Karen said. I don't know if you heard it, but when she was saying that, that line over and over, she said in the middle of it, cancer. Cancer can't, can't keep me down. Disease can't keep me down. Nothing can separate me from the love of God and eternal life that has been given through Jesus Christ. Boy, when you get that revelation, why would you turn him down? Why would you wait? Why would you put it off to another day or when I get older or later? You can have eternal life. And lastly, the R stands for resurrection. That because he was resurrected and came out of the grave, you have resurrection power. You 
have the power of the Holy Spirit right now that says there ain't no grave, the grave of alcoholism, the grave of drug addiction, the grave of shame, the grave of failure, the grave of self-hatred, eating disorders, whatever it is that the enemy has, in, has, has, has put you in and said, this is going to be your death. This is going to be your ending. There is no grave that can hold you if Jesus is Lord of your life because he gives you resurrection power today. And all you have to do is receive him. And all the campuses, I have the greatest job in the world. I get to tell you that God loves you, that God is for you, and he wants to get in you. He wants to transform your life. And all he's waiting on is an invite. If you just open the door, if you just respond, if you just let your stinking pride be put under your foot today. Say, you know what? It's Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. But Jesus is coming. I better get ready. I better get my family ready. I better get my whole life needs to be in one direction, moving toward heaven, moving toward eternity. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? I know in whom I have believed. Because he lives. Would you stand up at every campus? I can face tomorrow. Everybody at every campus sing it like a big choir. Because he lives. That's beautiful. All fear is gone. All fear is gone because I You just lift your hands and sing it. Be been to Jerusalem with us on the Israel trips. They're amazing. But I want you to pretend for a moment you're standing at an empty tomb. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great Sing it, church. How great thou worship him.
every head bowed at every campus. If you would like to say today, I need that Savior. I need all of those miracles contained in the word Easter. I need it in my heart. I've tried to change. I can't change me. I need that in my life. I need it to come in me and live. I need Jesus. It's Sunday, but Jesus is coming. Get ready. Get ready. If you're listening to me today, it's not by accident. I really feel a constraining now. Many, many need to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Their backsliders need to come running, not to a God who's angry at you, but one who's ready to wrap his arms around you. He's been waiting. If you want Jesus to be Lord of your life and you don't know you're right with God and you'd like to have that peace, that forgiveness, and you know that's you. I won't embarrass you. I won't humiliate you. I'm going to pray for you. But he never comes where he's not invited. And when you raise your hand in a moment, that is the invitation. And his spirit will come running. Pastor, pray for me. I need to get right with God today. If that's you, boldly lift your hand high and unashamed. It's powerful. It's powerful. Raise those hands all over the building in the overflows. Wherever you're sitting at every campus, just lift them high and keep them up just a moment. Hands up, hands up. Up in the balcony. I'm looking in the balcony now. I'm looking at every campus. Thank you for raising that hand. You can put it down. Jesus saw every one of those hands. And now I'm going to ask this congregation in unison, out loud, to pray a prayer that is a biblical prayer. That God said, I'll back it up. I'm the truth. And I'll do what I said I would do if you'll pray this. Everybody in this room, just lift your hand toward heaven. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe you died on a cross. I believe the blood you shed was precious blood. And it cleanses my sins. And I believe on the third day, you did it. You came out of the grave. And because you came out, I can come out. I receive a new life. I receive a new beginning. I receive the power to be called a child of God. I am not a slave to fear. I am a child of God and I am free. I'm born to live free from this day forward. I am your property, Lord, and my life is yours. Give the biggest praise of the day right now to Jesus. Are you ready for the blessing? Here it comes. Every one of you that prayed that prayer, there's a little area back there called Next Steps. Go back there. We've got free material. We're going to pour into your life. And I'd love to baptize you in water in this church, on this stage. It is a miraculous thing that happens when you do that. Are you ready for the blessing? Lift your hand up right now. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus mighty name. You are blessed. We love you. We'll see you Wednesday night, next Sunday. Don't miss it for anything. Have a great week, everybody. God bless you. leave it here today. I want to remind you that if you have not yet picked up your ticket for Forward Student Conference, you can do that by going to forwardconference.org. Get your ticket today, but another opportunity that is available to you is to get a ticket for someone else. You can serve as a sponsor. All you have to do is go through the same registration process as you would for your own ticket, but you can sponsor a student that may not be able to get there. 
by themselves. So again, that's forwardconference.org. Register today, be a sponsor for someone as well. And we know that God is gonna change thousands of lives at Forward Conference 2019. But thank you so much for joining us here today at Easter Sunday here at Free Chapel. And we'll see you next Sunday morning.